we now have with us a senior advocate of Nigeria, Wahab Shito, who joins me now to discuss this development and other issues, especially the off-cycle elections in Mo Kogi and Bayesa State. Good to have you, Wahab Shito, SAN. Thank you, Dr. Well, what, what's your take? Ahead of these uh, off-cycle elections in Imo, Kogi, and Bayesa State, we were told that INEC was ready, the security agencies were ready, uh, the security agencies read out the uh, riot act, and uh, yet the reports we've been getting is about voter party uh, buying of uh, voters, particularly in Bayesa State, where Eradiri, Udeng Eradiri, of the Labour Party said he was not prepared to buy uh, uh, votes. And then violence in parts of Baesa, violence in parts of uh, Imo State, and violence also in uh, Kugi State. Uh, the INEC chairman was say, oh, lessons have been learned. Has anybody learned any lessons? Thank you, Dr. Ruben Rabati. Uh, my own concern is whether some of these uh, incidents that uh, you have alluded to can actually be ascertained and proved. And this is the worry. If you, if, if you allege that there are my practices in an election, you must, all, you must be able to prove that by evidence. Uh, you, you will notice that in, a, in an election of this nature, nowhere is, can we say an election is perfect. In an election, you will see proof, uh, I mean, uh, proof of my practices. You will see, I mean, evidence of my practices. The question is, are those my, uh, my practices of large scale nature? as to vichy the election. And do we have proof of this, my practices? You know, candidates will always complain. Yes, there could be, you know, incidents of my practices, but can they be proved? Uh, look, this is a legalistic approach. <laughs> where you say, you who alleges must prove. Uh, yes, yes. But if you look at the reports in the papers, uh, we were told that uh, a Labour Party agent in uh, Imo State was beaten and rough at the collation center. Uh, Senator Atan was on this program. He said the chairman of the, uh, of the party in Imo State was also beaten up. What other evidence do you need? No. We, there are reports of uh, shootings in uh, Kogi State, in uh, Nembe, in uh, Bayesa State. Yeah, thank you. So Mark. have we learned any lessons? Well, and if, materials did not arrive on time in many of these places, contrary to INEX uh, 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 promises that materials will arrive on time. No, we have uh, stakeholders who are actually involved in this election, electionary process. INEC has a role. If INEC has, is failing in the discharge of his uh, responsibilities, we must be able to hold them accountable. Security agencies also have their own role to secure the conduct of the elections and then those who are involved in the process. I think what is important and is that if this incident actually occurred, there must be you know, particulars, proof to show that they occur and so that we know those to hold responsible. For instance, in an election of this nature, uh, INEC is statutorily charged with organizing and the management of elections. That is the responsibility of INEC, to organize the elections. If they fail in the discharge of their responsibilities, there must be consequences. Uh, but this is the problem. Yes. We have the Electoral Act, we yeah. have the Criminal Code, mm -hmm. we have all these laws. Yes. Do we ever hold anybody responsible in this country for electoral violence? In the last uh, cycle of elections, we were told, oh, hundreds of persons were arrested for snatching ballot boxes, for engaging in uh, 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 undesirable conduct. But uh, nobody knows who has, <laughs> who has ever been uh, sanctioned. Until, so is it that the law in itself is uh, ineffectual? The, uh, until there's a regime for consequences for infractions, we are not getting anywhere. 
are usually at the end of ele every election, those who are guilty of ele uh, electoral offenses ought to be brought to book, ought to be prosecuted. I even look at the always uh, you know, recommendations. This, this was part of the recommendations made that you cannot just go into an election and then perpetrate all kinds of atrocities without consequences. That in itself is impunity. So and nobody will come here and legitimize that or say, oh, violence should be encouraged. We have security agencies that are they failing in, in their duties who are supposed to secure every area. Uh, I think if, now the point I'm also making, which I think you should appreciate is that uh, you could have evidence or you could have incidents of my practices, violence, uh, multiple thumbprinting and all that. Yeah, uh, how do we devise a mechanism to, to actually establish these uh, you know, occurrences? It's very important. Eh? Beyond, because people can make allegations. Those who are making these allegations are they prepared to come forward to actually you know, give evidence of what transpired? And that is that is key. Then, if, if we are, uh, like uh, you, know, you know, this this public opinion, mm. public opinion is is quite. Uh, you, you, you alluded to this to that in one of your presentations. It's quite different from the, law. the way the, the law, the way the law operates. I'm concerned about the element of proof, and I'm also concerned about those who witness some of these uh, atrocities must be ready to come forward. They must document these incidents. And they must be ready to give evidence at the appropriate forum. Yeah. So that we know those who hold accountable. If I neck that is statutorily charged with the responsibility of organizing a free, fair, and credible election, it's found wanted. I don't think any patriotic Nigerian should not, okay, I mean, uh, should, uh, should uh, legitimize whatever I neck. Uh, uh, but, but the legal framework on yes. uh, I neck and its responsibility. Yes. Uh, pushes the presumption of regularity on the side of INEC. Yes. Which is why everybody is saying, even in the determined cases, both at the presidential level and also at the subnational levels, uh, INEC uh, just gets, goes free. It's only when the, uh, uh, the Aloshis are speaking uh, Ubita that they will then make some mild comment about INEC. What do we do to hold INEC responsible in the true sense? Well, to hold INEC responsible, I think we must deploy technology because uh, uh, INET will continue to deny, INET will continue to hold to its position that it has conducted the election in a free, fair and credible manner. And INET can only be defeated if there is, co uh, uh, contra if there is contrary evidence, there is evidence to the contrary. Convincing, cogent, compelling evidence, incontrovertible. So I think, and the best way to be able to ascertain this is to deploy technology. Yeah, but the burden of proof also makes it very difficult. Of course. For the petitioner. Of to course. Prove this <laughs> or a case. Yes, uh, that, well, that is in, in the area of uh, uh, law reform, amendment of the law. As it is now, there's no way you can fault the decision handed down by the various election petition tribunals, including the Supreme Court. Because if you look at the grants for vitiating an election, they are clearly specified. And this, the burden and standard of proof, I'm sure you are, you are a sorry lawyer, so, eh, is well known. And if you don't meet that requirement, it's not just enough for you to say there are irregularities or there are incidents. The question is, are these irregularities sufficient enough mm. to overturn the election? Okay, let's talk about something else. I mean, I had to start with uh, the that. election because today we're looking at by SIMO yes. uh, Kugu State. Well, you are a university teacher. Yes. The federal government is now saying that in terms of internally generated revenue, universities who have deducted from their IGR I think it's 40 percent. Yes. So what do you think? And yet the investors are saying, we don't have enough money. We just managed to get, to get by. Uh, but uh, 
the university, the, the government is saying, well, this is, uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know, made possible by the Finance Act and by the Finance Secular of 2021. And some of these universities, like the University of Abuja, they make uh, over two trillion as in, uh, internally generated uh, revenue. Why do they want to sit on all that money and say the federal government cannot take uh, a substantial percentage of it? it? It was surprising to me just to know that uh, these universities are making so much money. I think the reality is that our universities are grossly underfunded. As it is, our, most of, some of these universities are only partially funded. To now ask them to turn in 40% of their internally generated revenue is an, an attempt to kill the university system. And I think all of us will be concerned. The university system is playing a critical role in the development of our country. And uh, most of these uh, services, user charges, user charges, service charges, uh, in respect of accommodation, in respect, in respect of uh, some other uh, items that uh, you know the university charge, uh, they, they already subsidized already. The question is, will you say user charge qualifies to be IGR? Uh, I don't understand the nomenclature. When you then say that uh, universities who are barely battling hard to survive, most of these services they render to students are subsidized, grossly subsidized. I don't, you don't expect them to turn in 40% of what is already being subsidized to government. It doesn't make sense. Well, but there's also the, the issue of accountability yes. in these universities. I, I once sat on the governing council of a university, and one of the things we used to deal with then, major issue, was accountability. Yes. How, okay, university, uh, uh, you have the council, you have the university uh, management, the admin, and we used to raise issues about how they used to spend money. So these universities, don't you think that part of the problem is the accountability in the universities? Nobody. Because some of these universities, they do consultancy. They, some of them even do pure water. They do bottled water. And these things bring money. <laughs> Nobody will quarrel. Some of them the, even have bakeries. Nobody will, be, will quarrel with the idea of transparency and accountability in any organization. But the reality that you and I know is that the university is not a revenue generating ent entity. No, but the federal government says it is. No, it is not. It is not. It's also not a profit-making entity. It is a, pro a pro I mean, service-providing entity. And they are not making profits. That's the truth. Most of these services they, they offer to students are at gross subsidized rates. Now, to now, if government wants uh, them to turn in 40% of, uh, of their revenue to government, then government will be ready to fully fund university education. No partial funding. Already, uh, the side, uh, universities are just uh, be, uh, being partially funded. And this way, universities are trying to make the best out of a terrible situation. By trying to generate, just to be a, for be a survivor. And then you still want them to cover 40% out of this to government. It doesn't make sense. But I think the way to go is not for us to, us to confront the government. The way to go, in my view, is for us to make its case known to government through the, uh, through the available channels. Interact with government, persuade the government to see the reality of what is on ground. In my view, we should encourage the universities by deploying proper funding, not by depriving it of research. Uh, this way, we'll just uh, stay for the university system. And then the people who will bear the bronze are the students. 
the parents. And then it will be at the peril of our developmental process. Uh, but one of the things the federal government is talking about is full autonomy for the investors. Mm -hmm. So if there's full autonomy, will you expect government to still fund the university system? Well, you see, if you are talking of in terms of full autonomy for the universities, you must come out with clear court policies about what you mean by full autonomy. For instance, you are already you are funding, I mean, you are giving the universities partial funding. And you can see incidents of uh, incessant strikes by, you know, ASU. Most of the, you know, demands of ASU, ASU that will enhance the quality of education available to everyone have not been met. I am thinking that government should be interested in forestalling crisis. There's no way the committee of vice chancellors and then ASU will not react to this. Because this, this is a gross attempt to stifle education. And I think government should be properly advised that education is one resource that is critical to, have, to our developmental process. And it's not, well, it, 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 it's a, such a critical resource that should not be starved of force in order to pay staff salaries and, and then take care of all other, you know, you know uh, measures that will enhance the effectiveness and efficiency of university administration. So if, 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 if they carry on with this uh, policy of the, uh, deducting 40%, of the internally revenue uh, being generated by investors, you and I know the kind of effects to have on the quality of mm -hmm. education, on like university education. I think the way to go is for government to consult widely and then interact you know, sufficiently with university administrators in order to ensure that uh, this, uh, this does not snowball into a major crisis. Okay, uh, uh, Dr. Wahab Shitu SN, thank you for joining us, but uh, just hold on. There's still an issue I wanted you to comment upon. But let's go back to Bayesa State, where we have joining us now our rice correspondent, Ovi Temi George, who has been on the ground with the team since the build up to the polls. We understand that the collation process in uh, Bayesa State has been suspended till 6 p.m. We were showing that earlier on. Ovi Temi George reporting for. All right, Snails, from Yenagua, how are you? Hello, Vitima George. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes. What's the situation now at the collation center? The announcement of results, uh, we understand, has been suspended. OK. Um Six local government areas have been announced so far. The last being a Keremo. Um, three were taken before the break and they reconvened um, after three o'clock and three more local government areas have been announced here. So just two left, talking about Brass local government area and also Southern Ijo, both of them literal local government areas. In other words, river Rhine areas where sometimes getting materials, getting officials to come to the city might be a bit difficult. So those are the two left, Brass and Southern Njo Council area. Dr. Abati. Well, I mean, from uh, the uh, six uh, local government areas announced so far, who is in the lead? What are the prospects? Well, the People's Democratic Party have been declared to have won five, and then the All Progressives Congress won. But I, I have here the chairman of the All Progressives Congress, uh, Barista Dennis Otiotio. He has not been uh, happy about the outcome of the results announced so far. Um, we'll get to hear from him, Dr. Abati. Okay, please. Um, the first three results were announced, all going the way of the People's Democratic Party. Then the last three, PDP has won two again, making it five, and NIMBY go, uh, actually went to the APC. But you raised some points here, watching the camera now. What is your grouse? 
Well, uh, 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 first I want to start with the uh, Nimbi local government area. In Nimbi local government area, I am registered in polling unit 3 of Ward 11. I went to Nimbi, uh, my ward and voted in my polling unit. And then other people also voted. You, and then after the uh, voting results were collected in the various polling unit results sheets from ECA, and then the results were also uploaded in the IREV and taken to the World Collection Centers. At the World Collection Center, the INEC official collected the results in those uh, 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 three wards, Ward 11, 12, and 13. But unfortunately, after collection, the results were supposed to be collected at the local government headquarters, at the local government level. But INEC now, the REC, gave order that the material should be moved to uh, uh, Yenagua, here, at the headquarters. And we said, why? Why? Because we, we, we know that in uh, Sakbama, which is the stronghold of uh, the PDP, the results were collected at Sakbama. The local government uh, uh, coalition was done at Sakbama. In uh, Keremo, the local government coalition was done at uh, Keremo. In uh, Kolga, where uh, the governor of uh, comes from, the local government uh, coalition was done at Kolga. But in areas where P APC is winning, for instance, in, in Brass local government area, they are insisting that the coalition should be moved to uh, Yenagua. In Southern Ejo, where our deputy governorship candidate comes from, they are insisting that material should be moved here to this place for coalition. In Nembe local government area, where I come from, they are insisting that the material should be moved to uh, uh, this place for coalition. And then we have just seen that when the coalition was done, out of 13 wards, three wards were cancelled. There was no justification for the cancellation of those three wards. Now, look at, let me give you the, 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 the raw data. In um, Ward 11, which was cancelled, APC scored 11,039 votes. PDP scored 39 votes. In Ward 12, which was also cancelled, APC scored 8,925 votes. PDP scored 46 votes. In Ward 13, which was also cancelled, APC scored 7,001 votes, PDP scored 74. Now, if you look at it, in total, in the director wars, APC scored 26,965 votes, while PDP scored 159 votes. That is APC leading with 26,806 votes, which has been cancelled, which has been removed illegally from the total number of votes that have been scored uh, 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 by APC. Okay, um, the, um, you got the information that you could formally lodge a complaint, which you have done. Well, you see, you see, the irony of it is that when we complain, they say, lodge a complaint. And then when the PDP complain, they cancel. They take action and they cancel. That's what had just happened. They canceled three wards of Nembe local government area because the PDP complained. But when we made complaints, they say we should write, put it in writing. Even when we write and protest, they do nothing. Okay, as it stands now, six local government areas have been declared. Five have gone to the PDP, one to the APC. Two local government areas left. That's talking about Southern Brass Ejo and, and Brass. Southern Ijo. These are our strongholds. Okay. Brass and Southern Ijo yeah. council areas. Yeah. Okay, as it stands, and that's how it is. It will definitely go all the way to the eventual declaration of results. Do you see or foresee any turnaround or any magic? Because as it stands now, if it were a football match, it is 5-1 against you. If INEC does not rescind the cancellation of the three wards in the local government area, APC is going to formally back out from this uh, process. Because I see no reason why 60-something thousand votes are removed. That is a systematic rigging with the collaboration of INEC and the, and the uh, uh, this thing. So we are not going to accept it. And if INEC does not rescind their decision to cancel those three wards, which removed, effectively removed over 26,000 votes from APC, but there is no reason for us to be there. Okay, are you conceding before the two local government areas? We're not conceding. What we're saying is that this is a clear injustice meant to the APC and that the national chairman of uh, INEC should uh, uh, quickly intervene to ensure that there is justice and that democracy is not ridiculed in this uh, coalition. Thank you very much, Varista. Denis Otutu, thank you very much. Um, and I have here, of course, you can predict that there would be dissenting voices. A former speaker of the House of Assembly in the old River State, Right Honorable Tal Fordongolo, is an agent of the PDP here. Your friend, Barista Denis Otiotio, just okay. left here. He's not happy with the outcome, but you seem to be smiling. What's happening? Because you also 
were not happy with the, the result declared in NIMBY? Um, I will urge my friends and APC to be good sportsmen. You see, we are not, clearly, we are not there yet. It's not a perfect electoral system. But with the introduction of beavers, with the introduction of beavers, we have moved positively forward. And uh, with regards to two issues that he raised, he said the areas in local government areas where they were winning, that uh, they were asked to come to the headquarters, the uh, INEC headquarters for collation. That is not true, it's misleading. Even in all in areas for security reasons that there were challenges, INEC, in due, after due consultations, decided that, look, everybody should come here for collation, world collation and the LGA collation. So it is across board. But clearly, and then in the case of Nembe Basambri, you can see that the, from the pattern of the votes scored by the various parties, it's, all, it's one way. Almost everywhere, PDP, Doyediri is winning. But in Nembe, and then the scores are not outrageous. Because with Beavers now, it's a better reflection of actual voting. And so this, but in Basambri, Nembe, you can see that they had, we clearly, everybody, even observers, if they can attest to it, the whole area was militarized, violent, characterized by violence, and very painfully, they are even given by as State a bad name. Because in the case of Basambri, uh, in the seven wars in Basambri, after the materials were taken there for distribution to the uh, rack centers, they prevented any other voter, any other native, anybody from going near there. And even INEX, senior INEX staff who had been posted to this state were held abducted, held captive. What a terrible disgrace to the state. So all these things happened, and that was something that happened in the face of INEC. That's why INEC decided that for those three wards where people were held abducted and materials were not allowed to be taken out. Because the way Basambri is, the highland has four, uni uh, four wards, and then the suburbs, the other areas have three wards. So you need to move the materials from the highland to those wards. But the Basambri APC family, and the militants and the aggressive uh, elements there insisted that nothing must be taken out of uh, Basambri uh, Nembe. And so even the INEX staff, everybody was kidnapped and left, manhandled. So, so you're not happy no, with the outcome in Nembe? He is not also happy no, no, with the outcome in Nembe? It's not. It, the, it, was, it was at the behest of the INEC people who saw the situation themselves and who had who suffered from the hands of uh, the APC family that you know what it means to be kidnapped. So they and materials not used. So they said, okay, let us cancel the... Oh, so okay, I'm okay. Happy. I'm not happy in the sense that the four words to elections did not hold in those four words. Okay. So they also ought to have been cancelled. Okay, it, 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 it appears you are also not happy with Nembe as he is also not happy with Nembe. We are rounding off now, but you broke into a smile when I called you to come and talk. Now you're leading by five goals to one. Two more local government areas. What if something happens? No, nothing will happen. It speaks for itself. The, I, the, it's a fair, you can see. Reps, if sir. Reps, if sir, locator. The thing speaks for itself. All over the state, it is one way. It's because of uh, violence, kidnapping, and all these bad antics and practices that they were able to even win Nimbe. If not, it would have been by now six over six. We could have given them one all the local government. We are hoping to win the rest too. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much. You. Uh, right Honorable Talford Ongolo, former Speaker of the House of Assembly in the Old River State. And of course, earlier we heard from the Chairman of the All Progressives Congress, Barrister Dennis Otiotio, dissenting voices. They do not agree today. Would they agree tomorrow? I cannot say. But we're still here at the Coalition Centre. Uh, it will, of course, reconvene at 6 o'clock. Dr. Abati. Thank you very much, uh, Vietime George. We come back to you in Yenagoa at 6 p.m.